Hello and welcome. My name is Ryan. I'm also known as RM2GoDev. Now, in this video, we're going to go over creating a couple of cool little things that can bring our map to life. Once we've gotten through all of the sort of setup of our project and basic um, look and feel, and just a couple of uh, tricks that I was hoping to share with you guys, we'll move into doing some more of the logic type programming, things like health and hit points and battle systems and shops and events and triggers, save and load, the typical kind of role-playing game features that you would expect to have in a game. But before we can get through all of that, we need a game to work on. So a couple of things that I'm going to share with you in this episode. Um, I am a terrible graphics artist. Uh, some of you may have seen my, my work before. Anything that I've drawn looks absolutely terrible, so I cannot draw. So anyone out there who doesn't have any experience in creating graphics and is always looking to make the games look a little bit better, I have a couple of tips for you here. So let's start by creating another sprite, and this time we're going to create a flower. We're going to call this one Sprite, uh, sprite Flower. We begin by selecting Edit Sprite. We do the same create from script, uh, strip, and we select our tile set again. Now I'm going to have a quick look through this tile set. Um, there is a flower that I'm interested in using, and it's this one here. So again, just position this little box around that tile and select OK. Now, this tile doesn't have any animations to it, and we could add some animations to our map to bring it to life a little bit, so we're going to do that in this episode. But before we do that, select OK, center the flower, select OK, create an object, call this one Object Flower. Select the sprite that we just created, and OK. Now we go back into our map, and if you remember last episode, we added these physics trees, and they were pretty cool, but the map looks kind of dead at the moment, so we need to add some we need to add some life to it. Let's add these flowers. Again, by holding down Alt, we can move these things off the grid a little bit so they don't need to be exactly on the grid. And again, we'll handle the ordering and the depth of these objects a little bit later. So let's just add some flowers around here. And add some flowers on a map like that. Now go back to our flower object. And in the create event, we're going to add that little script that I taught you last time, which automatically handles the depth for us. So that was depth equals the y position times by negative 1. And also we need to add a script header. Let's call this one depth correction. Tick the box and select OK. Now when we run our game, you'll notice that we have some flowers on the map. There we go, we've got some flowers on the map. They look beautiful. But the game still looks dead. And you'll also notice that our player can also walk behind these, so we'll need to fix that up a little bit later as well. We'll, we'll come up with a script that handles, that fixes that for us. That's the depth correction at work there. But basically, the game still looks a little bit dead. So we need to animate these, let's animate these flowers. Now, we don't have an artist working for us, we're a, a really low budget indie studio working from our parents back rooms so let's close that and go back to our flower edit the sprite copy and paste the sprites now you have two of them open up the second instance and zoom really close in on that sprite now what, what I tend to do when I edit a sprite like this is I, is I grab this little circle select tool here and you see that lets me draw a selection on the screen and basically I'm just gonna select one of those flowers I'm going to move it one pixel down and one pixel left, just like that. Now I'm going to select the other circle and I'm going to select the other flower. I'm going to do the same thing, one pixel down, but this time I'm going to go one pixel right, just like that. And then we select the center flower and just select it with the circle. It doesn't matter if you grab any of the green, it doesn't matter if it's messy. And just drop it down by one pixel, just like that. Now what we need to do is we take our pencil tool, hold down uh, shift or is it alt? It's control. Hold down control. Select the just a couple of these colors. Like I said, we're not actually painting in details here. We're just trying to fill in this space. So paint in some space filler, just like that. There we go. Now that just fills in the space. Now that looks a bit odd there. If you see anything that looks a little bit odd, just fill it in with some with some color, just like that. There we go. Now we have a very simple flower animation. I don't know if you're able to see that in the preview window there, but that looks really good. Select OK, go back to our flower object, and in the create event, add another script. We're just going to call this one here Animation Speed Timer. 
we'll call this one here image speed equals 0 0.1. So let's make this one 0 0.08. What we'll do is we'll add a random number between 0 0.00 and 0 0.03. What this will mean is this will give us a number anywhere from 0 0.08 to 0 0.11. 0 0.0... yeah, anyway. Um, select OK. Run our game again, and what you'll see now is our plants have a little bit of life to them. They're ordered correctly in the map. And they have a little bit of an animation to them. And we could do the same thing for the tree using that exact same technique. So let's go ahead and do that. Open up the tree object, edit the sprite, create a duplicate. We may or may not keep this animation, it's just really to show you guys the technique. But basically just select select that entire tree object, that top layer. Just select it like this. Here we go. You know what? Let's select the entire tree object, all the green bits. I changed my mind. There we go. Select all that green. Once you've got all the green, shift it down by one pixel. Let go. Now select all of the top layer. So we select the top layer of that green. And include the shadows as well, because we want the shadows to move with this. We don't want to leave the shadows in the same place, because the whole top layer moves. There we go. Let's add that next layer. I'll tell you what, let's undo that. We'll save that for now. So now we've got this sort of bobbing animation. It bobs a little bit. Let's copy that last frame. I'll zoom right in on that. And then we'll select everything again, but we're only going to select the top layer. Take the shadows again. Don't forget to take the shadows. There we go. Move that all down by one pixel. There we go. Just move that. I made a little selection there. Just move that. Alright. Next image. So now we've got this sort of two step process. The tree goes down, down. Now we've got to do the same thing for the top layer. We'll zoom right in on that. Just make a big selection here. But just select this top layer. And don't forget, include the shadows. And all we have to do is drop that by one pixel. There we go. So now we've got this three step drop. The tree drops three layers. Now all we need to do is repeat that in reverse. So we copy image two and paste that at the end. Then copy image one and paste that at the end. Now we have this sort of bouncing animation for our tree. Now if we save that, press OK, go back to our tree instance. This should have been called depth correction. That's my bad. We have to keep our scripts very neat and tidy. Add another script. Let's call this one here animation timer. This one here is going to say image underscore speed equals 0 0.08 plus random 0.023. Sorry. And the other thing we can also do is we can also say image index equals random just say a random number between uh, 0, 0.0 and 5.0. What this will do is this will pick one of these sprites. We've got six of them. Yeah, it should pick one of them up to number four. But that gives every tree instance a different starting position. So all of the trees will look different when they animate. Now, if we run that script, run that game now, you'll see all of our trees bouncing around. And that gives our game just a little bit more of a lively life uh, a lively effect now you see I just did this I just did this as a really quick effect like I, I took my I didn't take any time I didn't you know I just rushed it to show you guys really quickly so there are some little image artifacts here and you probably could come back on with Photoshop and do this rather than use the game maker um, sprite editor but nevertheless the effect is still pretty cool and you can do you can do that with anything um, if you want to make a like a piece of paper f blowing in the wind on one of the, on like the clothesline or the clothing on a clothesline in a 2D game. Just grab it and skew that little section just a little bit in one direction. Do it again in another direction and set the animation speed and run the game. Again, you'll notice we have our collisions. We don't want these flowers to go in front of us, but we'll probably handle that in another video. We'll worry about proper depth ordering a little bit later. We could probably fake that as well by using the uh, the image offsets because they're they're currently working as the hero's um, center point. Actually, yeah, let's do that now. We'll do that now. Go back to our hero sprites, and I think we need to set our Y position to be at our feet. So let's set this to 32. Oh, sorry, 32. So just do that for all of them. Set our Y positions to 32. And what that should do is that should set our vertical offset to our feet. 
Now, if that doesn't work, we need to set it to zero. Yeah, that's better. So our vertical offset. So you'll see the plant will come in front of us, but it will it'll only happen when our feet exceed the center point of the flower. That looks much more realistic. So now we can actually get behind a flower, and it looks as it should. We can still stay behind. We can still get behind these trees. And we can still get in front of them as well, just like that. But we we won't actually get behind them until just a little bit further up in the image. But that's not a problem. See, we get behind the tree just after the collision ends. So where that collision ends is where we get behind the tree. So we seem to be making quite a little bit of progress. Um, I'm going to sort out the next video for our series. Um, once again, thank you guys for watching. Follow me on Twitter, it's at rm2kdev. Leave comments on this video please, I appreciate your feedback. Um, any features that you'd like to see, please let me know. Um, and thanks for watching, I hope this video sort of helps. Thank you, bye.